Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to Covenant on Wednesday night. We're so glad you chose to be here with all the liquid sunshine coming down outside. <laughs> We're glad you chose to be in worship today, this evening. Uh, also, I uh, just want to remind you that on tomorrow night, we will be having a choir rehearsal here at 7 o'clock. Saturday is our Glenn's Reading Room at Judy's house. I need any more information, see Judy. Also, I um, want to, uh, a special announcement. Uh, many of you know that Chris, faithful Chris Lindley and, and John Siegel, who uh, uh, home was really damaged uh, by the tornadoes about seven weeks ago. They've been living in a um, hotel. Uh, insurance company been putting up in a hotel. They this is it next week. Next week they're going to be moving into a rental house. But Saturday, they need some help. If you can help, uh, Saturday uh, they're going to be moving the stuff out of their house to storage so that the uh, constru- uh, the contractors can begin work on their house. And if you can help, Saturday, it's over in Bessemer near the west, near the um, UAB West. Call the church office and get Chris's number and uh, he will give you information uh, about how you can get there and so forth like that. We're not going to give out his address. We'll let him give it out if you can help. Please call and get it from Joe, and he'll be glad to give you Chris's phone number. If you can help, that certainly would be a big help to them. Most of you know they've been so faithful to Covenant, and so if we can help, please, please do so. Uh, Also, uh, next week coming up is Vacation Bible uh, uh, school and so next Wednesday dinner will be a uh, regular dinner but we will be having vacation Bible school next week and then we'll return to our regular Wednesday night service the week after that um, I want you to know that bomb ministry is uh, my bomb is coming up next week as well and uh, so just be mindful of that all things uh, I th- my bomb is a connections group. You need to catch up, Bobby. If you love the Lord, say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. If you love the Lord, let's stand on our feet and worship. So all of this liquid sunshine, are y'all going to take back what the devil stole from you? All right. Let's take it back. Put the pastor on the floor, will you? Yes, we're putting the pastor on the floor. All right, let's sing. I'm taking it back. devil stole from you that's when you start realizing without a shadow of a doubt that he is Lord he is our Lord and Savior oh he is Lord he is Lord 
He is risen from the dead. shall bow.
And you know what? There is a peace that passes understanding. It only comes down from the Father above, though. You don't find it looking for it in this world. There's nothing in the world that can give you the peace that God's peace can give you. And the reason it's a peace that passes understanding is because at the time, there's nothing going on in your life that would really seem like peace. But you have it in the despite of all the disruptive influences that's going on. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of peace? God wants to give it to you. And maybe some of you need to relieve yourself of some of the stresses that have gone on this week. Maybe you need to just leave them at the altar. That song says, take it to the Lord and leave it there. If you do, come to the altar and leave that peace here. And leave those, and get the peace here. to you tonight we come from all kinds of places in our lives we know that you know about every situation that every one of us face we know that you are able to touch and heal and make whole whatever it is but God right now we ask for peace in the midst of the storms of life it may be storming on the outside, but your peace can dwell on the inside. And so, God, tonight we're asking, even though the rain is falling, let your peace rain on us. And so, God, whatever the people need tonight, re let them reach up and touch the hem of your garment by faith. Let them know that there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that can take the peace that you are offering tonight. The ones in the room, the ones that are listening by the internet, whoever it is, God, send your peace because your peace is able to make a difference. And so, God, I pray that the ones around this altar, when they get up, will be able to leave whatever it is they brought behind and hear how to live with priority. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, give us peace. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful peace. Coming down. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over.
praise God. <laughs> Whew. I don't know who else needed a dose of peace, but I sure did. <laughs> and I thank God for it. And you know, I was thinking on the way in tonight with it raining and raining and raining some more. I was like, well, thank God, because we need the rain. When we get to August, we're going to be like, where'd all that rain go? <laughs> so I thank the Lord for it. How wonderful is it to have Covenant Community Church to come to on a Wednesday night and to get that dose of peace? How wonderful is it to get the message of God's love, the message of, of Pentecost and pride? I hope you've all taken that message with you this week and really lived it. Just remember that your tithes and offerings, everything that you give, goes toward continuing to spread that message of love, that unconditional love to everybody, not just in this community, but around the world through our web ministry. Ushers? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Which is the first commandment of all? Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Master, thou hast said the truth. There is one God, and none other but He. And to love Him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love His neighbor as Himself, is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, God, for the rain, Lord. Thank you for keeping us all safe as we got here tonight and as we go home. Lord, I pray that you will bless these tithes and offerings, Lord, and multiply them as you do the fishes and the loaves when you fed the multitude. In your name we pray. In the clip... The story was nicer than what the scripture reads. Pharisees was really trying to trip Jesus up. He wasn't there to really learn. He just wanted to see if he could trip Jesus up. I think that's what happens in a lot of our lives. So often, the evil one just trying to trip you up. One of the things that he's trying to trip you up over is really how to live your life with the right kind of priorities. And because he's pretty good at it, many of us spend our time living with priorities that are not God's priorities for us. And so Jesus, in answer to the Pharisees in the little story there, the little video clip, 
went back to what's really the priority. The priority really is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. And the second, he said, is like unto the first, that you love your neighbor as yourself. And then he added this line. He said, on those two hang all the laws of all the prophets. And what he really was doing there was trying to put in place living with priority. Because you see, if you know what the priority is, and then you try to live by it, you can really have a great life. It's never too late. And so the very first part of it was learning to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might. And so this series that I'm beginning tonight is going to dwell on that first one. Living, loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Now tonight, I'm just going to introduce this series that we're going to be studying over the summer months. Uh, the reason I just want to do the introduction tonight is because we take a break next week for Vacation Bible School, and then I will start the heart and the meat of the series immediately after that. But tonight, what I want to do is I want to lay the foundation for the studies of this series. And that is, of course, living with priority. I dare say, I know it's audacious to say that this has the potential of being one of the most important series that I've ever, ta I've ever taught here at this church, if you'll take it to heart. And that's because living with priorities is probably the most important thing that you can do in your life as an individual and certainly as a Christian. Now, I have some confidence in saying that. And the confidence is based on what Jesus said. Amen? And so in this series, we're going to be talking about how you take, what it takes to make a great church, what it takes to make a great life, what it takes to make a great relationship because the bottom line is they're all the same thing. All the same thing. The same thing it takes to make a great relationship is the same thing that takes to make a great life. Tom Holliday said it this way, a great, com a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will grow a great church. He was right, but guess what? A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission will also build a great life. If you learn to live that life with priorities, the right priorities. Let's pray. God, we pray, we sing about peace tonight because we know we need peace if we're going to live with priorities. But God, we also need your word to teach us how to live with that priority. So teach us in these moments what it really means to open ourselves to hear and receive what your word is that we might live with priority. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I said to someone that the handout is deceiving. Uh, usually if there's a short one, it means it's a long term, right? If it's not, if it's long, handout is, goes the other way. Hopefully it'll be the other way, unless I get wound up, and then you never know. Um, living with priority. In the Great Commission found at the end of the uh, Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says this, go into all the world and tell everybody Make disciples so people can come to know me and be baptized in me and taught in me. Our vision here at Covenant is uh, premised on the Great Commission. 
It really is. And, and that, of course, is premised on the great commandment. And as you saw in the clip, there was a day when Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and, 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 and one of the rulers of the synagogue, one of the Pharisees, wanted to trip Jesus up. And so he wanted to ask him, you know, now there were 613 laws, of course, in his knowledge. Uh, if you, some places it says 633. Uh, and so he thought, well, you know, let's just put him in a hot spot. Let's ask him which one is the most important of that 613. And, and it's so you, and so obviously, Jesus lived his life with priority, and so he went around him. He didn't hear what he wanted to hear. He wanted to hear something that, Je uh, that would, uh, he could fault Jesus for. And so what Jesus did, he said, I'll give you a new commandment. And the new commandment is the greatest commandment. And that is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and all your might. And the second is like unto the first, that you love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the laws, all the prophets. Uh-oh, where am I supposed to go with that, that Pharisees were thinking. And you saw, he, he sort of restated back to Jesus what Jesus had said to him. But of all the words in that incredible, important statement, the most important of the words was A-L-L, -L, all. Did he say, love me with most of your heart? Love me with some of your soul? If you got anything left over of your strength, I'll take that. If you got half of mine, like, never mind. No, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. That seems like an awful lot, doesn't it? With what, everything we got to compete with, what do you want to ask me for everything? That's because he deserves everything. And that's because you're going to find out that if you learn to live God in an all, love God in an all-out way, it'll cure a lot of the ills that's going on in your life. Amen? And so in this series, we're going to be talking about living with priority. Jesus said that this is life's greatest priority. What is the most important thing you can do with your life? He said, love God. Because you find it all through the night. New Testament in all kinds of ways. Uh, you know, in uh, Matthew 6, when it says, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you, it's about priority living. If you love, if you seek God first, in other words, if you love God first, if you put your priorities there, then all these other things that God knows you need will be supplied. I didn't make it up. It's in the book. Amen? Nothing, absolutely nothing is more important than the way you and I love God in our lives. There's nothing more important than that. And, 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 and if we just do that one thing, we will have done the most important thing. And one of my life goals, and I, and I hope it is every Christian's life goal, I hope it's your life goal, is to really learn how to love God in a deeper way than I do today. Any of you remember that old song, uh, old Southern Gospel song, uh, uh, His Love, how did it go, Pam? His Love is Deeper, Richer, Pure, Sweeter. You remember that song? That's what you're supposed to be striving for every day. That song was based on this, on this scripture because it's about priority living. If you learn to love him richer and pure and deeper, it gets sweeter every day. Amen? And I, and I hope that that's your, your uh, goal because excellence in any relationship that you have, even with St. Francis, starts with your ability to love God. It starts with, even if you do love that woman, you know, 
It starts with loving God first. If you don't learn to love God, you're not going to be able to love that significant other the way you should love them. That's just a fact of life. Oh, you can love them, but you, it'll not be what it could be if God was first in it. Amen? And so that's where it all starts. Jesus says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and all your mind. And he's saying, it's worth your time to develop that kind of love for God. Jesus is all saying, also saying to you and me that, guess what? If I tell you that this is what you ought to do, believe me, you can do it. Because I'm not going to ask you to do something that you can't do. Jesus is not going to say, um, now love the Lord with all your heart. Now, I realize that you're never, never going to be able to do it, but try it. That's not what, no. You can learn this. And this, if, who was our great example? Huh? Don't be timid, you got it. Who's the greatest example? What was, how did he live his life? Loving God with all his heart, soul, mind, and mind. And when someone who's a pro at tell, telling you to do something, you ought to do it. You ought to follow their advice. Amen? And G, nobody's better at loving God than Jesus. Jesus is a real pro at Jesus looked at us and said, here's what I want you to do. I see the potential in you to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your might. And some of you think, well, not me. I can't do that. Really? Are you really calling Jesus a liar? That's what you're saying. When you say, I can't do that, you, you're calling Jesus a liar. Amen? Who's right? You or, or Jesus? Okay. I'm glad you got that one right. Because we're in trouble if you don't get that one right. Because <laughs> the Bible said God's word be true in every man or lie and woman. Amen? And why don't we have, why don't we do that? Okay? Jesus never asked us to do something he didn't tell us that we can't do. And so over the summer months, we're going to talk about how you do that. We're going to talk about how you love the Lord because it's more than just one session. It's about different aspects. We're going to break this loving your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and mind. We're going to break it down for you. And when we learn, because when we learn to do that and we learn to apply that kind of love, spills over into other areas of our lives. And then we'll learn to love that difficult person at work. We'll learn to love our spouse even when they ain't that loving at times. We'll learn to love those folks at church that we don't particularly like. Amen? You can have that all-out love for another person. You can have that all-out love for even a particular kind of entitlement. You can learn to have that all-out love for all sorts of things. Now, what does that mean? What does all-out love mean? And all-out love means, yeah, I got it there, don't I? I think an all-out love means that the love begins to occupy most of your waking moments. Most of your waking thoughts, rather. How many of you ever had a first love? Do you remember your first love? Some of you can't remember back that far. Do you remember that, that first love, even your current love, when you first got together with your current love? All you ever thought about was then. From the time you woke up, they were on your mind. The, the stupid things they did, you giggled about. <laughs> that wasn't a bit more funny than a man in the moon, but you did. You thought it was. Because it was occupying every thought. And, when, and, and it was good and it was new. And, and so it, it was just, he, he, he left the cap off the toothpaste. <laughs> now you want to kill him if they leave it off. But back then, you know, it was just, it, 
Why? Because that's just the way it is. And all out love occupies much of your waking thought. You go to work, and it's a wonder if some of you didn't have uh, uh, deathly accidents because you think about it, <laughs> and not paying attention to what you was doing. Some of you saw him walk down the hall at work and followed him down the hallway. I'm sorry about that, Dwight. <laughs> but it <laughs> Y'all, somebody protect me on the way out tonight. Uh, but, but it occupied you every thought. And all I love is consuming. It occupies most of your thoughts. And, 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 and that's the kind of love that Jesus is telling us we need to have for God. A love that occupies most of our thoughts. Because if it does, then we won't get sidetracked with so much of the foolishness that we get sidetracked by. Amen? An all-out kind of love also impacts a majority of your decisions. You know, when you got an all-out love for God, it changes priorities and decisions you make. Um, <laughs> some of you know this story. I, I was in Rio de Janeiro with uh, some friends, and they just, we, were, we had rented a condo. And, um, <laughs> and uh, this condo was strange. And that you had to, you could get locked into this thing. You had to have a key to get in and a key to get out. It's one of those security things down in Rio de Janeiro. But anyway, they went to the beach and I was supposed to join them there. But they had locked me in. On a Sunday. I missed that half a million men walking down the beach at Ipanema Beach on Sunday. And speedos and sh and smaller uh, attire, and I was so livid to be locked in it for about fifteen minutes. And I thought, I've got a, I've got, I've got some say so in this. Whether I'm going to be bitter or better. I, I get to make the decision how I react to this situation. You know what I did? I decided I'm going to pray. And then, after praying, I got my Bible out and I began to read. And for about those seven hours that they was watching boys, I was reading the Bible. But you know what? I got into it. And it was good. And, and the Lord spoke to me in ways that I, I would not have had on that, on that trip. And so he didn't realize until they were getting ready to leave the beach. He said this horror came over him. What if I've locked him in? You have. And he was dreading all the way back that that's what had happened. And he had. And he was dreading to see me. But there was no need to. Because I allowed, now I ain't that good at it most of the time, but in that moment, I allowed the love of God, that all out love for God, to be in me. And it impacted the decision I had. And when he walked in scared to death that I was going to kill him, I was fine. Oh, he took me out to the biggest steak dinner that you ever seen. I told him, you don't have to do this. And he spent the rest of those 19 days in Rio de trying to make it up. To, but it wasn't, that was his guilt, not mine. And it wasn't something I put on him. Because the love of God, that all-out love for God, impacted my decision. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? You get to make the decision. It impacts your decision. You have the power with the love of God to decide whether somebody else make you miserable or not. And if you're still miserable, it's because you decided to be miserable. 
You decided that somebody else was going to make you miserable and you allow that to impact your decision, not the all-out love of God. Amen? Also, using that first love thing again, it causes you to make lavish sacrifices. Let me, let me tell you something. You know how you go without, when you, you know when you first fell in love, you go without sleep and go to work the next day just to be close to them. <laughs> That's a sacrifice. Amen. Any of you remember, uh, the, you know, you, you just wanted to be near them. And, and whatever it took. And boy, being at work was such a chore to be away from them. Now you can't wait to get to work. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you make lavish sacrifices. You ran up your credit card. Buying them a little trinket or something, whatever. See, but I didn't say they're all wise decisions. <laughs> what if you had an all-out love for God like that? What would that do for you? Well, I think that all-out love for God, for if you had that all-out love for God in your life, it would energize your life. Some of you are so tired from living tired from the daily grind of living. I mean, you come to the end of the day, you can barely put one leg before the... If you could learn to rekindle, re, just rebuild that all-out love for God in your life, it would energize your life. Some of you need a, a shot of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need a booster from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Is that, do they still give booster shots? I don't even know... Isn't that what it's supposed to, in the booster shot, supposed to energize you? Is that right? Somewhat, that ain't what a booster shot, well, you need one that energizes you. <laughs> the spirit is different than medical, okay? And, and, and then it also, here's the important thing. Rearrange your priorities. Rearrange your priorities. Some of you, some of us, I'm going to not say you, I'm going to say us. Some of us got our priorities all out of whack. God is, God gets what's left over. I ain't talking about money. Here, treasure can talk about that later. And the board can talk about that later. I'm talking about we give God the leftover of our life. We come to church if we ain't got nothing else to do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added. God has given us a few of those other things, and we've decided that they take priority over. Oops, did I say that? You'd be surprised how many people have told me, you know, I've got this boat, or I've got this, or I have this on Sunday. Now, God understands if you have to work. God understands you've got to put food on the table and all that stuff. But even so, you ought to find some time, if you can't be on Sunday, sometime during that week, you ought to have some time for worship, even if it's worship at home, that you have set aside time. Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? You see, all the all-out kind of love for God will always involve all four of these things. It will involve your heart. It will involve your a mind, it will involve your soul, and it will involve your strength. Now, first of all, it says we love him with all of our heart. Your heart has to do with your feelings. God wants you to love him with your heart. That's the way we that's the way we feel. In other words, those are the emotions. Loving God should involve your emotions. That's why I never understood why people don't think they should ever get excited in church. Did we have church Sunday or what? It involved my emotions. Didn't you see silly people in the choir jumping around like this? People standing over there. Pastor threatening to crawl up on the pedestal and kick and, and jump. 
When you love God with your whole heart, it involves your feelings. It involves your emotions. You know, my mama used to say, I wouldn't serve a God I couldn't feel sometimes, and a God didn't heal sometimes. Because it involves an all-out love of God invites, it, it includes your emotions. Judy told me one time that every Sunday at communion, she gets teary because she realizes that there is nobody who walks through the doors of this church not welcome to the table. Don't mean you have to come, but you're welcome. You see what that said? That's that all-out love that involves her emotions. Amen. Because that's part of who we are. And God, and, and, and Jesus was being comprehensive when he was saying, love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Secondly, God wants to love him with our mind. That has to do with our thoughts. Not just your feelings, but also your thoughts. You know, that requires you putting some time into thinking about this thing. Amen? You need to be thinking about God. If the only time you think about God is when you come here on Wednesday or Sunday, what if you only ate on Wednesday and Sunday? That would be quite a diet plan, huh? <laughs> We'd all be stick people. <laughs> Most of us stick people spiritual. Because we only eat. On, well, y'all eating actually a, twice as much as most people. Most people only eat once a week. Spiritually. Amen? God wants you to be robust. Healthy. That spiritual is the new end. <laughs> With God. Amen? God wants you to be big and robust spiritually. You can have a little skinny body. God won't mind that. But make sure that spirit is, amen? And to do that, you've got to do it with your, you've got to have an all-out love for God that includes not only your emotions, but your feelings, but also, what else did I just, also your thoughts, yes. I got carried away with that one, didn't I? Third thing. God wants, to love, wants you to love him with all your soul. That means a lot of things, but one of them is your will. Do you know what that means? That means those things that you have control over. Love him with the things you have control over. You can't always control your thought life. Now, you can bring that thought life in. You can't tr control every thought that goes in your mind. Uh, even when you are trying to love God with all your thought life and so forth, i give you a classic example, and I've used it here before. Have you ever been praying and some weird thought just runs through your mind? Has nothing to do with what you're praying about, what you're thinking about. Just some really off the wall runs through. You don't always control it. But loving God with all your soul, your will, means loving God with the things you have control over. That day in Rio de Janeiro, I had control over how I reacted to that situation. And God's love allowed me to act healthy. Like I said, I missed the mark plenty of times. Got it right one time out of a thousand. Okay. <laughs> but the thing with you, you have control over your will. You have control over your will. Love God, and all out love for God means to love God with your soul. That's your Have you ever thought about loving God with the way you decide stuff? Maybe instead of deciding to be negative, about a situation before you know all the parameters of it, you may need to decide, I'm going to wait till I know all the facts before I jump 
get my exercise and jump into conclusions. That's so, that's, sometimes that's the only exercise some people get, jump into conclusions. And then when the facts come out, they ain't, don't resemble anything, and then you look like, and then, you know, a lot of folks will not say they're sorry and wrong if hell freezes over. But Jesus challenged us to do that. Love at all out love with God with ourselves. And then the fourth thing, Jesus said, I want you to love God with all your strength. That's a companion to the last one. That's our actions. That means the place where you put your energy. If we put as much energy into love as we put into gossip, negativity and naysaying. Boy, what the world would look like. What our church would look like. Amen? And so tonight, two weeks from tonight, because remember you're to be here next week for what, Patricia? Amen. I'm going to put my all out love into how I respond to that. <laughs> that little... <laughs> We're going to start really breaking down these four things. Um, how do you love God with all your heart? Have any of you ever studied Psalms? I've actually studied the book of Psalms. It was not a short study. Okay? Um, but a good question to ask when you are ever studying Psalms is, how do you do that? That's the good question to always ask. Better yet, how do I do that? Um, David was called uh, the man after God's own heart. But David, as you well know, was not a perfect guy. There was that little incident that happened with Bathsheba. Uh, you know the story. You know, that great story. Says he, you read it in 1 Kings uh, where it says he was strolling out on the roofs at a time when kings went to battle, David wasn't in battle, um, you know, the generals had decided you're the light of Israel, so you're not going into battle anymore. You stay behind, we'll do the battle. And so General Joab stepped in and, as the commander of all the forces, and, and he declared that, uh, that the king will not go in battle again lest the light of Israel is extinguished, because David was called the light of Israel. And so he was just walking out on his rooftop. And um, he looked over and saw this honeypot named Bathsheba. Hmm. Wonder who she is. And someone said, that's your rather the Hittite's wife. But he uh, decided, well, you know, I'm the king. And it's good to be the king. Well, you know the story. He had an affair with another man's wife. This is the heart of God we're talking about here. This is the man who was after God's own heart. And so he ended up an adulterer, a deceiver, a liar, and a murderer. This is David now. And that was just one of the incidents. There's lots of other incidents. Like He was far from perfect. That's the moral of the story. And yet God would continually look at David and say, he's got the kind of heart that pleases me. He's, got, he's, the, he's the kind of person I look at and his heart is so full. What was it about David? David, this liar, this deceiver, this uh, 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 adulterer, and this murderer. What was it about him that had the kind of heart that pleased God? You think you've done some bad stuff? I bet you ain't done anything like David. And I bet you those four things I just mentioned is just the tip of the iceberg. Do you know that great line? Have you ever heard somebody being the apple of somebody's eye? Do you know that uh, that's a term from the Bible where it's talking about David? It says that David is the, was the apple of God's eye. This man who did all of this. Well, if you read through the Psalms that David wrote, and by the way, David did not write all 150 Psalms, okay? But he wrote most of them. 
But if you read the ones that David wrote, if you make a list of, the, of what were the practical things that he did that made him the kind of person that was a man after God's own heart, you'd probably come up with a list of about a hundred, somewhere in that neighborhood. A hundred things that he did that made him a man after God's own heart. Two weeks from the night, I'm going to share the big six with you. The top six. Is that a teaser or what? <laughs> I'm going to share the top six things that David did. And these are six things that if you and I can learn to do in our lives from the example of David, a man after God's own heart, if we can do those six things, if we start to incorporate those six things into our own lives as an attempt to love God with all of our hearts, you will develop an all-out love for God. The Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles 28 and 9 that we are to serve him, talking about God, with, with wholehearted devotion, with a willing mind, for the Lord searches every heart and he understands every motive behind the thoughts. This is saying you may well serve God with your wholehearted devotion because he already knows your heart and your thoughts and your motives anyway. Why serve him with a half heart if he knows it's a half heart? Amen? He sees every heart. He, you, can't, you can't fake God out. You can fake me out. He, sometimes you can even fake your part out. But you can't fake God out. There's that wonderful Episcopal colleague that says, for whom all eyes are open, all hearts are known. God knows it all. So serve him with wholehearted devotion. Give him your everything. If you give him your everything, I'm coming to tell you that you can't be God given. He'll give it back to you. What does David teach us about how to do this? In the next section, I'm going to share six very practical things. I've, all, I've worked ahead, so I know it's six, okay? Uh, that you can begin to do in your life to make a difference in your life. But until then, remember God says you to love God with all your heart. How do you do that? Kurt Franklin wrote a little song that if you learn to work the, word, the words of it, if you begin to hum it at work, it'll, it, it'll, it'll reaffirm this thought of loving God with all your heart. It, it reaffirms that you can do it. He says, I know I can make it. I know I can stand. No matter what comes my way, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can take it. With Jesus, I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. Sing it. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand.
you have control over the decisions that you make and God wants you to thrive living with this priority amen would you feel me may the Lord watch between me and thee while I absent or from another amen I know that